Hi everyone, welcome to Not Defining, the place where we talk all about sexuality, gender, gender presentation, orientation, all those kind of things so that you can feel your best, feel informed and confident, whoever you are. So today we are talking about Pride because it's Pride Month. Happy Pride to everyone. Just a quick rundown so that you can understand what Pride is and what it's about. So Pride in its essence is just about celebrating the LGBTQ plus community and fighting for our rights. If it's not cis heterosexual, then it is celebrated and fought for during Pride. Pride normally takes place in the month of June, but there are also events happening kind of over the summer is where it's usually had and it takes place all over the world. The most important thing to remember about Pride is that Pride is not necessarily just a celebration or an event. Pride is actually a state of mind. It's a mindset and it's about, quite literally, being proud of who you are and being strong and brave enough to show it in your daily life. So in a way, Pride is really every day that we as LGBTQ plus people or people who are not cishet defining or conforming, every single day that we get up out of bed is pride. Every day that we go to work, every day that we live our lives is pride. June is just the time that we come together to kind of mark that and reflect upon it. So the first pride as we kind of know it today um, Pride has existed since the dawn of time um, across the world, but it started in its current form in 1969. And there was a venue in New York City called the Stonewall Tavern. And this was a place where uh, LGBTQ plus people gathered. At the time, unfortunately, uh, there were lots of laws against homosexuality and so on. And the police would regularly raid the Stonewall Tavern and brutalize and arrest its customers. Um, and this got extremely bad um, to the extent that on one occasion, the police came in and they tried to arrest a beloved member of the community. Her name was Stormy Lavery. Um, they manhandled and uh, brutalized Stormy and put her back in the back of a van and Stormy said everyone <laughs> someone do something about this um, the pressure peaked and people started rioting people started fighting back against police brutality so what we need to understand and remember is that the first pride was a riot against police brutality, uh, which they were inflicting upon our community. So when people heard about the Stonewall riots, more and more people got involved, more and more rioting happened, and there were marches organized uh, all over America. Now these marches were protests. These were civil rights protests. And that is what Pride is primarily all about about. It is about protesting against the indignity, the violent suppression, and the denial of our civil rights as LGBTQ plus people. So when we go to Pride, although a lot of the time it's a celebration, we remember that we are there to protest our civil rights. And that protest is just as important today as it ever was, although conditions are improving for some people. There are still 72 countries in the world which ban homosexuality. There are about five countries in the world where we are actually put to death. So just think about how serious that is. Um, and even in countries where the legislation has progressed, there are still so many people who can't live how they are. People have to be in the closet. People have to come out. It's a very scary way of living there's a lot of bullying violence against lgbtq people is on the rise in the uk at the moment 
so it's not getting better. And there is regressive legislation being brought in this year alone in the UK, in the US and other countries. So the protest element of pride is so important today as it ever was. What you will see in a lot of countries now is that a lot of corporations and organizations are getting involved. Now that's great because money is coming in and society is kind of showing its support, but it's also okay to have mixed feelings about this because a lot of the time we have this concept of what we call rainbow capitalism, which is where companies will put a rainbow on their logo around June, but they're really just doing it for the publicity. They're not actually supporting the community. So different people have different feelings about this and we should not be fooled by all the companies who are putting rainbows on their logos. Similarly, um, it's worth mentioning that a lot of the time, queer people of color, uh, disabled people, and other sections of the community don't feel included in Pride Parade. So it's really, really important whenever we're celebrating Pride to just make sure that we are including all of the community because Pride is for all of us. Now, something that's very important is to remember that Pride was begun by many sections of the community. We don't know who threw the first stone, but there was someone who was extremely instrumental in those riots. Marsha P. Johnson, who is a black trans woman. Stormy herself was a mixed race lesbian woman. The person who actually organized the first protest parade was a bisexual woman, Brenda Howard. And there have been so many different people involved since the start of Pride. So let's make sure that we're always including and respecting, recognizing all the parts of our society. In the UK, there is a fantastic organization called UK Black Pride. If you want to go and support them, go onto my Instagram uh, or Twitter, click the link and you can donate to them. They do an amazing job making space for queer people of color. It's fantastic. Check them out, UK Black Pride. We support you. One of the questions that sometimes gets thrown at us is that in some pride parades, there is a section for what we would call kink or different kind of fetishes. And some people will say, oh, it's very promiscuous and inappropriate. What I would say about that is that actually sex and our sexuality is a huge part of what has been repressed and suppressed. So I think it's important to have those sections of the community reflected. There are always sections of the parade for young people, for children. Be aware when people throw that at us there are lots of things which have people with not many clothes on, sexual references and so forth in heterosexual society, and people are fine with that. So just sometimes it can be a veiled LGBT phobic trope to say, oh, well, you've got kink at pride. So what? It's normally very family friendly and anyone can go. On that topic, anybody can go. So, you know, you don't have to be LGBTQ+. If you're an ally, then it's great to have you there. Um, what I would say is just be respectful that it's a space where LGBTQ people get to feel safe and cis straight people get to feel safe in most other places. So just be respectful and uh, enjoy being there and showing your support. And finally, just to say, a lot of LGBTQ people themselves don't really like pride. Sometimes it's too crowded. Sometimes, as I say, they don't feel included. Sometimes they just don't really relate with the rainbows and the glitter and all the rest of it. That's completely okay. You don't have to go. Like I said, pride starts within. And hopefully this June, we can all take a moment to be proud of who we are, proud of how far we've come, and proud of 
how we're expressing ourselves and living our lives the way that nature intended it. So to everybody around the world, wherever you are, however you're marking pride, I wish you a happy pride. Thanks for listening and don't forget to click subscribe and I will speak to you very soon. Happy pride. Bye for now.